first of all, let me thanks ODI for inviting me to attend this conference. Uh, I will speak briefly, 20, 25 minutes, right? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. I, I'll briefly speak on three aspects. First, uh, about the country, about the country, because Nepal is now uh, facing, facing the problem of transition. You might be aware of the conflict, and now we are in transition about the politics, economics, and uh, the role of development partners. On the first, first part, I will very briefly touch on this issue. And in the second part, I will try to link budget reform with the development outcome, how uh, these reform initiatives, uh, PFM reform, as well as other economic reforms initiatives, they contribute to development outcome. In, the develop in this development outcome, I will touch upon macroeconomic stability, resource allocation, service delivery, along with, along with uh, the governance issue, because I'm a little bit now associated with the oversight agency. As, as the head of the over Supreme Court Institution of Nepal, I will touch upon the, some governance issue too. Then lastly, I uh, will speak very briefly on the challenges, what challenges we are facing in Nepal, and some measures, uh, how to overco overcome that challenges. The, the, the very, very briefly, I will touch upon this issue. Yeah. Uh, the politics in transition, now as I mentioned earlier, Nepal is passing through difficult process of political transitions. Uh, most of the people here in this room may not be aware of the painful nature of the uh, transitions. What we, very few people of, uh, who are present here, they know how, how the painful will be the transition uh, in the economic sense and political sense. Because we are facing the political instability since last 20 years. There's sometimes, sometimes, it, say, I, I give the example, in, 19, in 1990, we introduced liberalization, the context of liberalization, that paid us some, some, some outcomes in terms of employment, in terms of output, in terms of investment, but that we cannot continue, that, that we cannot sustain, that we cannot continue for longer. And th that was disrupted after the uh, insurgency, may, say mid-90, mid-90, 95, 96. Since then, we are facing sometimes conflict, sometimes insurgency, sometimes transition. The, the, this, this we are facing at the moment. And uh, uh, because of the unresolved politics, what, 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 what we are hope, wh hoping this today, on the coming 19 November, we have uh, the elections of Constituents Assembly, second, second Constituent Assembly in 19 <coughs> November. After that, we hope that the country will uh, move forward, will be in a shape, and uh, we will move forward. In the Uh, very briefly, I will touch upon the economic context. Economic, as mentioned, I mentioned earlier, economic reforms and uh, brought some good results uh, in the 90s, but there it was also not out of, you know, there was problem in implementation too. The problems particularly related to the capacity, institutions, and in unstable politics. Even one interesting part I would like to mention here because most of the uh, researchers, they are working in this, in that field. One interesting part is even in the insurgency period, even in the, during the conflict, the country, microeconomic stability was achieved in Nepal. That, that was one interesting part. Uh, 
uh, we, can, we can have some discussion and if, if the researcher or the learned people like you, you can, you can uh, share your feeling how it was, how that was possible. Uh, it is very much interesting and at, in that tone, you know, the, what the donor uh, advised us, what the donor told us, that what, what sort of uh, instrument we should use and what we did. Uh, th th there is little bit, you know, differences uh, between the con con the country context as well as the donors context. There are some differences too. Uh, the at the moment, yeah, we we are I today also we are maintaining our ma macroeconomic stability. Yeah, con country is a moderate average growth of 4.2 percent. We are achieving. Uh, Revenue, revenue growth is 17% of GDP, that is also uh, good, and, but still there are some uh, concern that needs to be, uh, that, that needs ad attention. There are contingent liability, about the contingent liability, that is increasing, pension and social welfare uh, requirement is increasing, Recur recurrent expenditure is increasing, and the capital capital expenditure is decli declining. Uh, that th these are very very briefly I mentioned about the economic context. Now yesterday and this morning also we, we had we have had very detailed discussion about the institution capacity, Ministry of Finance. I am not going into the detail in the institutions and cap capacity, but two points I would like to mention here. Uh, that that Ministry of Finance in reform or the you know uh, institutional capacity building only in the Ministry of Finance is not sufficient. Is not sufficient. Uh, you have to go beyond that. Beyond that, that means uh, that includes the line ministry, sectoral ministry, uh, the even even up to the local bodies. Even because they provide services to the people, directly to the people, uh, as well as to the oversight agencies. Then, uh, one, one next point, what I would like to uh, mention here is, our bureaucracy, Nepal's bureaucracy, it said, and uh, they have proved also, it's comparatively, comparatively professional, uh, but little bit politicized, right? That, that means that to the professional bureaucracy, that should be utilized, the government or the system should utilize their skills and the professionalism for the betterment of the uh, country and the, you know, policy, policy implementation. Uh, I'm talking about the institution, then I, as the Auditor General of Nepal, I should mention very briefly, briefly about the OAGN, that is the Supreme Audit Institution. Uh, <coughs> we, we are contributing with the Auditor General Office are co co contributing uh, to promote transparency and the accountability. Our way of doing things is a little bit shifting from compliance audit to performance audit. We are, we paid more attention in the performance audit. And uh, this year, since this year, uh, we, we have also initiated the participation of civil society organizations, CSO, CSOs, since this year. And uh, that, uh, what what I uh, want to say is we are contributing to PFM system as well as as, as well as the whole total uh, uh, system system of the governance in Nepal. And uh, one one aspect that uh, needs consideration is the strengthening of our capability, strengthening of our. Uh, capability as well as without diluting the independence, without diluting the in independence of our office. 
I, uh, in the development partners engagement, yeah, we talked very much this afternoon as well as yesterday. Uh, what I uh, want to share with you uh, is the role of foreign in Nepal is important for our socio-economic development because about 25 percent of our national budget that comes from the donors that is almost equivalent to the capital expenditure. What, 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 what we uh, get from the donor that we spend on the capital, exp capital expenditure. And there are about almost about 40 donors. That means uh, you, can, you can think that how the, the, the problem of coordination We, we are facing because 40 donors at, at a time they are they are they are involved but interestingly they are they are even the donor are not much transparent the auditor general's report reveals that only 45 percent 45 percent of the uh, aid money is channeled to the government system Government procedure, 55 percent, and th this is this is from the Auditor General report. 55 percent is outside the purview of the system, as well as outside the purview of the uh, national audit. That 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 is uh, how how the foreign aid agency are working in Nepal. Uh, that there there are problems. That you, you, what what we are. Arguing with them is use the country system, but uh, both of us, both of us means donors as well as, as well as, as the countries, we we have the problem. That's why still the uh, the country system is not much used. Uh, now now in in this funnel. Uh, part what what I suggest is instead of you know quick fixing, it is it is easy to give prescription, but instead of quick quick fixing, donors or development partners concentration should be on the downstream. Uh, that that technology based. Technology-based downstream reform uh, with longer association. That with longer association. If, if if only we try to quick fix, then the problem will remain as it is. Oh, I think uh, th the next one. Yeah, ten minutes. Eight, eight oh, more minutes. Okay. Then then uh, I, 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 then I have to quit some some of the. Huh? Skip, skip some, some. To you. Huh? Okay, just, just very quickly, and then uh, go, go into the main part, mm -hmm. the, the budgeting in the huh? but outcome, outcomes, right? Yes. Uh, the evolution of KFM reform in Nepal. Uh, there was a paradigm shift in politics, economics during 1990s, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, besides political instability and the insurgency, uh, absence of proper sequencing that hindered the reform process, we have some weak, weak legislation, we have to replace the legislation for some time, and the institution wasn't so weak. Uh, donors' initiatives that prevailed much than the con co country initiatives, I'm talking about 1990s reforms. Uh, that in, in those days also, some achievement, we, we, we got some, some achievement, some results. Interestingly, when we are talking about the PFM reform, interestingly, most of the PFM reforms that were initiated during the conflicts, during the insurgencies. 
that means in the you know that when the insurgency and conflict was in peak, that was about 2002 to 2006, most of the reform initiative, some some of them, economic reform agenda was initiated before that and other, particularly related to PFM. That was that 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 that, that was. Uh, initiated during the con conflict period. And what, what I would like to mention here again is our experience. Our experience, we, we always, you know, uh, talk about the politics, talk about the, the politicians. Uh, they, 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 they are not capable of doing things, but in our case, what we feel, our experience reveals that Bureaucrats can also contribute. Bureaucrats, technocrats can also con contribute uh, in the technical aspect. In the technical aspect, in the implementation, in the implementation, uh, in modernization, if, if the policy set by the uh, politician or the pol politics uh, is good. The bureaucrats can contribute. That is our experience. That 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 can be, uh, you know, proved. Very recently, last year, uh, ODI did one operational risk assessment of PFM about Nepal, and uh, they, ident they identified with 49 issues. Identified with 49 issues to sum up. They did the key challenges that was four. The first one, strengthening the oversight agency. The second one, fixing the budget. Th third one, improvement in capital project implementation. And the support one, coordination between the central finance agency. Th these were the core areas uh, identified by the study. Okay. Now, now uh, I will. I, I'll <coughs> skip that slide. I'll go into the budget reforms and development. Uh, that, that, that is, that I, I must say, there is a strong link between budget reforms and development outcome. Similarly, the development outcomes ultimately contrib contribute to state effect effectiveness or nation building. And uh, prioritization in the three questions, I, 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 I'm dealing with the three questions. Prioritization is absolutely necessary. If without prioritization, uh, the reform initiative whatsoever could turn into a mess. Uh, all, all these, what, what I am saying is from my experience <laughs> rather than the big books and the writers and you know these, these are these are coming from my own experience because I was uh, associated with in in this job since last two decades three decades uh, similarly assessment what what we assess that needs to be based on the realities. Realities, uh, rather than replicating the success history of other, other parts of the world, first of all, we should have our own basics, basic knowledge about the country, about the situations, about the environment. Then, then that's a, that measures, that reform measures good success. Next point. Politics of budget prevails everywhere, whether whether irrespective of system, irrespective of the government, irre irrespective of the level of the development, irrespective of the status of stability. This politics of budget that we are uh, not only Nepal because because I I give you the example uh, in one year we we face three budgets. For every four months, we have to bring new one budget because parliament was not there, is not there, even now. Then 
th this sort of problems uh, in developing least developed countries in uh, un in our part of the world we are facing but uh, you know we just heard about the US budget uh, yeah they, they, uh, that, that, that means it is everywhere the politics of budget is everywhere the reason is it is a tool budget is a tool uh, for policy and development intervention every government every government wants to intervene through the to the policy and the development activity through the budget that that is the reason the the authority of the budget that that's why everywhere it prevails uh, I, I i just wanted to share one experience with the epic initiatives that was not raised during this uh, discussion uh, development partners are the donors at the time they pressured uh, us nepal to enter into the epic initiatives but nepal resisted uh, because because uh, it was again in the during the ins insurgencies even they told us that uh, you, you 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 will be considered as a fragile state then we'll go to the field uh, that, that, that that was their person and then nepal resisted and uh, we tried we tried uh, domestically with national initiatives and the domestic reforms the national initiative was uh, austerity measures then started to pay the debt we substantially reduced the public debt that was 70 percent of the gdp and within, within uh, five years it came down to 53 the the imf ceiling was 60 right of gdp and then then now now it has come down to 30. Um, then, uh, just one, one, one point for the micro stability I mentioned. Uh, for, for the, I, I will skip again to this service delivery. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'll just deal with service delivery. Uh, EFM reform contributes to service del delivery. Uh, through the spending and the capital investment. In our experience, the, the health and the education sectors, uh, the sectoral, sectoral approach increased in spending in health area that has uh, given the positive result that the mater ma maternal mort mortality has drastically reduced our in the one one experience is that the modality of modality of service delivery also counts i can give you the example of uh, communities community based development approach in forest regeneration we were successful similarly for, uh, in in maternal mortality rate also we were successful because we used the mother's group that I uh, will skip governance state definition and just mm -hmm. just just uh, uh, way forward the uh, no, way forward okay okay uh, two minutes yeah <laughs> one minute, one minute. okay <laughs> uh, the way forward uh, there are there are some key challenges yeah, key challenges in the PFM reforms. Uh, first of all, the, you know, the managing transitional hazard, uh, restructuring with fragmented politics, achieving sustainable higher rate of growth, establishing linkage between development goals and sector strategies, the issue related to donor harmonization, as I mentioned earlier, strengthening of oversight agency, including Office of the Director General and other, other <coughs> agency, Public Accounts Committee and resource allocation and use under the federal character because we are, we are going from unitary state to federal system. These are the challenges and the way forward, I, I, I will just uh, uh, 
pinpoint achieve development outcome through sustainable fiscal policy. Whenever you prepare the fiscal policy, think about the sustainability. Institu institution and improved service delivery. The second point is standing coordination within government, within national agencies, and with donors. Adopt inclusive development strategy to minimize inequalities or the issue of marginalization and the limited access order. Pick the budget process and increase absorptive capacity so that we can spend more in the capital projects and empower the people at the grassroots level through the uh, community-based approach. Thank you.